really important. We're going to spend a lot of time on this at CES, which is reinventing the doctor-patient relationship for the 21st century. It, extremely important. It's happened in the waiting rooms, it's happened in the doctor's office, it's happening at home, it's happening all over the place. So it was really, really fortunate that uh, Dr. Jordan Schlain reached out, uh, founder of Health Loop, and I'm going to give you his fun fact. He lived in Africa teaching high school science, and they installed a water system. It's a story about water, humanity, and Western efficiency. So my question to his fun fact is, is he going to share the story with us later? Maybe at the cocktail party? I, I, I Inquiring minds kind of want to know. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I know this is the last one of the day, so I will try to be quick and a bit pithy. Um, kind of liven it up around here for a second. So I just came from my office where I was seeing patients, and, and my day job is I'm a clinician, um, and I've been fascinated with digital health and, and where technology intersects with, with, with healthcare for a long time. So, see, my, so I have a little bit of a presentation. It's, if you guys can see it. Um, so, so we talk about the relationship, the doctor-patient relationship, and I think it's important that we repeat again relationship because generally relationships happen with, between people. Not, I mean, we do have relationships with these things, and so this is some of the stuff that I use in my office. This is a dermoscope. I can snap a picture of someone's mole, send it up to the cloud, see if it's a, a melanoma or not, and if it is, off to the melanoma clinic so I can skip a derm visit to have them do the same thing only to send them to the melanoma clinic. So there's all sorts of cool stuff, and then you can give these to parents uh, for their iPhones. They can snap them on. They can put it in their kid's ear. They can send a picture to me. They can send it up to the cloud. So there's all sorts of cool stuff that's collapsing a lot of this stuff that we typically had to go to a, an office for. So, um, so medicine is, when you get it to the systems level, and, and Darren over there takes care of a thousand bed hospital, and if you look at this complex hospital system, you can go, wow, how do you do anything in there um, at any hospital system? And that's kind of a small one. But ultimately, it's a dyad. It's two people in a room or on the phone trying to solve a problem. That's what healthcare is. That is the functional unit of healthcare. It is nothing else than that. And so once those two people have a conversation about that, then they can maybe branch out and build teams to try to solve what that problem is. So let me go to the next slide here. Um, so act one, scene one. I just gave you a new diagnosis. I just gave you your treatment plan. And now you're the main actor in your healthcare movie. The movie starts with the diagnosis and the treatment. It doesn't end. And all the money that's ever been spent in healthcare on research, on textbooks, on medical school, uh, uh, everywhere is how do you diagnose and how do you treat? There is zero money being spent on and then what? Right? So, welcome to your healthcare movie. Who's the director? Who's the producer? Who's your supporting cast? Right? You're on your own. You just left the hospital. You just got your diagnosis of whatever, and now you're at home. And by the way, when you're sick, you're not feeling well. So when you're not feeling well, you're not thinking well. And yet, you're being re required to think and manage and do all these things day to day. And so how can digital health enable the, the healthcare movie to have the best ending? Because we like movies with good endings, or at least interesting endings. We don't like really, really horrible endings, although some people make money making movies with bad endings. Um, I'm not really today going to talk about Health Loop, which is basically the, the, how you make a movie with you in it and all your supporting actors and everybody else, but um, maybe later. So medicine is a people business in need of data. It is not a data business in need of people. And I think a lot of people in the digital health arena think the opposite. Hey, I just got all this cool stuff and I need some people to plug into it. If, you're, if that's your attitude, you're kind of coming at it from the wrong, the, the wrong way. And so there, then there's life versus lifestyle, and I tell a lot of entrepreneurs, hey, look, if you're doing lifestyle, that's a consumer app. The consumer buys it. They can measure how much they walked, how much they slept. It's interesting. It's a little bit of a parlor game. Life is morbidity and mortality. This is the real shit. I mean, this is like where everything's on the line. And it's not, it's not you can't just go, oh, I'm going to build an app that's going to get into the medical system. You can't do that. There's an army of lawyers. There's, there's life and death on the line. There's CIOs and CMIOs and everybody on the planet that doesn't want your little app up in their space. Because unless it's been vetted through multiple layers of the complexities of healthcare, um, I, I just say, look, you know what? Go to the consumer stuff and talk to employers and do Fitbits because 
measure steps and, and stuff like that. Because, if, But if you want to get into life, which is professional grade stuff, I mean, you're going to have to get the buy-in from clinicians. You can't go around us. We are it. And so you've got to get us to love this and want this and want to use this. Otherwise, we're going to block you at every turn. And, and, and CIOs and CMIOs are going to block you at every turn. So who wants the best outcome? So look, let's just say it's your movie, Act 1, Scene 1. I just gave you a diagnosis. And I said to you, hey, would you like the best outcome for your diagnosis and treatment? If I ask everybody in here, would you like the best outcome? I'm pretty sure 100% of you are going to say yes. OK, interesting, right? So now if you ask me, your doctor, Hey, Doc, Doc Schlein, do you want your patients to get the best possible outcome? The answer is yes. If you ask my nurse, if you ask his hospital, if you ask everybody, do you want this patient to get the best outcome? The answer is yes. OK, so if we all want the answer to be yes, and we all want the best outcome, how come we don't get the best outcome? How can we have all these problems in the healthcare system? If we're all aligned on the fundamental goal of best outcome, which is you know, no, 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 uh, no adverse reactions, no morbidity. I mean, there's, we can come up with 99 bad things that happen, but nobody wants it, but they happen all the time. And, the, and, and as part of the health loop uh, 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 company experiment, if you will, over the years, what I found is if you ask the doctor at a hip surgery, for example, hey, what do you care about? After we've acknowledged that you, the hip surgeon, want the best outcome for your patient, what do you care about? And the doctor will say, well, I care about I don't want my patient to get a blood clot, because that's a common complication. I don't want my patient to get a skin infection, because that's nasty too. And, and lastly, I don't want them to fall. And then, of course, they won't tell you, is I don't want them to call me all the time with all these stupid questions, uh, you know, blah, 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 right? But they won't tell you that. But what they care about are infections, clots, and falls. Now, let's go to you, the patient that's getting your hip surgery. What do you care about? You don't care about infections, plots and calls, uh, uh, clots and falls. What you care about is, when can I go to work? Is that blood in the bandage OK? You know, I, you know, how do I manage having a dog with a hip surgery? And where do I get those crutches? And how did I get the, the handicap placard? Because I can't drive. And so what you have is you have the doctor, who cares about a whole set of things, the patient, a whole set of other things. You go to the nurse, what she cares about or he cares about, whole different set of things. So you, everybody wants the same goal, but everybody cares about different things, and nobody knows what anybody else cares about. And that's where you start to get into the complexity of why we have all these outcomes that aren't the best outcome. And so you have to kind of break it down into these elemental bits of what, who cares about what. Um, I want to talk about the human operating system for a second. Because the human operating system is analog and nuanced. It is not digital. The human operating system is based on communication and trust. And trust is trust with other people. Yes, I trust my iPhone that it rings when somebody calls, and that's an interesting kind of a trust. But when you are sick and you are having an existential moment, you are gonna, the, the most important and powerful drug for any human being is another human being. right? We are social animals. We are analog. And so it's funny. You know, everybody talks about analytics this and big data that and analytics this. Well, guess what intuition is? It's the human brain's analytics. And as a physician, and even as a patient, you're multi-parallel processing thousands of bits in every second, and you come up with an answer, and you don't know why you did. But that's the analytics of the human brain. It's intuition. It's like, I have a feeling. I have a hunch. But we can't, we're not a computer to break down the bit different cells and bits of why we came up with that, whereas computers and Optum Labs and a lot of these other big companies can. So it's important to remember, we are analog. We don't have like USB ports in our neck. We can't you know, live the digital life. So, so what do doctors want if you just distill it down into some simple, simple things? I mean, you can just say time and money are the two big ones. Um, but you know, we really like to have more time with our patients because our patients would prefer to have more time with us. You know? And whether that's either a, a FaceTime visit or whatever, it's just the ability to listen. People want to be listened to. A Harvard Business Review uh, case study came out last week and said that being invisible is more negatively damaging to the psyche than being harassed. And if you're a patient and you're invisible to the doctor that, that, you know, that's supposed to be caring about you, that's got a lot of negative consequences and stress that, that have far-reaching consequences. And so you know, what do doctors want? They want transparency and payment models. All these people that pay us, um, I just removed an explicative, um, uh, basically don't tell you why and how they pay you. And, and you know, what we want is we want transparency like everybody else wants transparency. Why am I getting paid $30? 
and $20 and $50 for the same thing. Tell me why. And so that breeds a whole bunch of distrust between doctors and insurance companies and, and the payers that pay them and blah, blah, blah. And, and we want to decrease our risk. Again, we want the best outcome for our patients, and we want to improve our reputations if we can. And it's hard to improve your reputation when you have less time and people go on Yelp and health grades and, and say shitty things about you. Um, <laughs> what, do, what do patients want? They want to live their life in absence of illness. I mean, let, let's just boil it down. What do you guys want? You guys don't want to go into the healthcare system at all. Who does? The last time I checked, nobody wanted to consume an ER visit. Are you a consumer? Nobody wanted to consume a pill. Are you a consumer? Nobody wanted to consume like a, a readmission. Are you We talk about consumers, and there's no consumers in healthcare. I mean, in, in, in life. There may be in lifestyle. And they want to have confidence in their medical team, and, and they want to have technology provide an intelligent feedback loop to let them know how they're doing today. Are they on the right track? What do they need to know? What do they need to not know? What do they need to not worry about? Um, so what patients don't want is to be stuck in a database. And a database is a database where data lives and waits and until a human comes in and, and ch touches that thing. Um, I just invented that today. Um, but, but data has a waiting room in healthcare, right? You, you thought you had a waiting room when you went to go see the doctor? Well, your data's got all sorts of waiting rooms in healthcare. And those waiting rooms just sit there, the data just sits there until the doctor or a human or a nurse plugs into that database and pulls it out and does something with it. So data is not actionable, truly, until, it's, until a human interacts with it or until a human takes accountability for it. Patients don't want to rely on Dr. Google, who is an oncologist. For those of you who don't know what an oncologist, that's a cancer doctor. And the reason why Dr. Google is an oncologist is because when you're searching Google, you're very concerned about something. <laughs> and the last thing, and you're, so you're concerned, you have anxiety, the last thing you want to see is cancer on that list, and Dr. Google will always put cancer on that list, and now you're more anxious. So the Dr. Google machine only makes one more anxious each time they go searching on it. So doctors, patients really don't want Dr. Google because Dr. Google doesn't have the nuance and the context about who you are and where you are in your life. It is a flat file of, you know, basic pedantic information. Um, and, you know, patients don't want bad outcomes that could have been prevented. So what's the future look like? So I think that what we want to do is we want to enhance relationships between people. We want digital stuff to enhance human analog relationships. Uh, we don't want, you know, because we're not going to replace them. You know, we need, to we need to enable data lubrication. Data needs to flow faster. It needs to flow better. And, and we haven't really solved that problem. We, we are, you know, and we need to empower the, the patients and, and the people. Like, for example, I would call all of you people. I wouldn't call you patients. I wouldn't call you consumers. I would call you people. As a doctor, I would call you people. Someone that's trying to sell you a Fitbit would call you a consumer. A hospital will call you a patient. Right? So you have three names, and we cannot conflate, which we do all the time, these words, provider. You know what provider means? Does anybody know what provider means? Can, can I get, yeah, let me tell you what provider means. It can mean a one-person doctor. It can mean a 1,000-bed hospital. It can mean a multi-state, multinational radiology company. I mean, you can't say providers need to do X when provider, we're talking past each other all the time. When you say consumer, is that a patient or is that a person or is that a consumer? So the language that we use is completely screwing up our ability to have normal conversations with each other so that we can actually agree on what we should agree on and where we should move forward. And I think that's a big problem. Um, and, and, and I think lastly is we have all this information we're getting, all this data. Well, guess what? More isn't better. Better is better. And, and, you know, I was just in London and I went to this conference and there was a, all these things that were going to analyze this and big data that. And I was thinking, holy smokes. I mean, I've got to see X number of people per day and now you're going to give me a thousand other things to do that aren't attached to the person. I've got to wrap my head around the context to decide what to do. And so more isn't better. Better is better. And so as, as we think about how we need to move forward in the world as the, doc, the future of the doctor-patient relationship, enable me to make a decision easy with better information. Thank you. That's it.